Okay, good morning, everyone. And welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. Today is Tuesday, May 18th. Michael Boutros with you on the horn. Jay, March, and everyone in the room, great to see you. It's been an interesting start to the week. Kind of give you a little flurry of an update uh, last night with just some ancillary stuff we're looking at, but the dollar losses continue to mount. We're pushing lower in the dollar. Euro still kind of drifting into its resistance zone. So a lot of dynamics at play. Dollar CAD breakdown hitting that 100 mark that we looked at last night. Um, but let's dive right in. DXY, Euro, Sterling. Uh, we'll do dollar CAD, Sterling. Um, I got that on there twice. Dollar Yen, Gold, Crude, Aussie Dollar, and Kiwi Dollar. Uh, good morning to you, Jay. Any other questions or trade setups, guys? As always, uh, feel free to throw them on the message board at any time. So the inflation picture keeps getting worse. Um, I guess the discussions of them continue to mount. That's kind of been the market focus on all the headlines and all the financial and news publications. Here's what it looked like on the DXY as we were closing out last week. It had the possibility of some sort of reversal here, right? You had a weekly opening range break, shifted the focus higher. The main pivot we needed to get through was essentially 91. It's right here at 9092 is the March open. The 618 of the drop, huge pivot zone. That called the high. Literally couldn't break that. Broke lower to this week. As we started the week, the whole focus was are we going to catch support at 9013, 9011 or not? We just broke that. So this formation is now whoop, null and void. Here's what it looks like now. Right? <clears throat> Same thing. There's the break. What do you want to see on a move like this to validate that the move is indeed legitimate is you want to see that accelerated drop and we got it once it buckled below 91 uh 9013 rather 9014 february february low day close 786 retracement you saw that accelerated drop here's the objective yearly open and we're trading below that now as well so Near-term targets here, you got that swing low, okay, from back here in February. That gets you 89.68. Just below that's going to be the low day close for the year. That's from January. That's at 89.53. Both downside levels to look for. Next major sort of lateral level that converges on slope and all that jazz is all the way down at 89. So, man, the prognosis doesn't look good. Um, you know, even if we take this out to the weekly chart, if we close the week below 89.93, you know, sayonara, you're looking lower. Watch the weekly close. What's on tap this week that could trigger some play? Well, we don't have much out of the U.S. We did get employment numbers out of uh, the U.K., which were pretty good overnight. Uh, GDP figures were right in line with expectations. Over the next couple of days from the U.S., there's really nothing until minutes tomorrow. Don't think you'll get much out of that. But you do get another host of inflation figures that come out from the U.K., the Eurozone, Canada, heading to the end of the week, Japan. So... The inflation discussion, as it were, whether it be a global tide or something just domestic, uh, will continue to be the forefront here. So at this point, we can sort of scratch this pitchfork. Done. We're still in this really tidy descending channel formation right off the highs. There's a parallel right there. And then look, while below 90.13, the risk is still for that drawdown towards 89.53, 89.68, these downside targets. Bearish invalidation at this point, I'd be comfortable put at the weekly at the weekly open. <clears throat> so break close above 90.30 or 90.30 right here would essentially put you on a larger rebound. But from a trading standpoint, it's difficult because I can't really get on board chasing dollar weakness from here. So fresh short dollar exposure, it's tough to. It's tough to, where's your risk, right? Where's your stop? Now, if you're holding some dollar short positions on the stretch, you're looking to tidy that up on those next encounters on upcoming targets, but not really a new intraday market to get into any new positioning, in my opinion. 
So that's DXY on hold. Just a quick look at that. Euro looks like this. So I believe the Euro update was the previous day. And here's what Euro looked like as it was heading higher. So we had made that breach. Remember I told you last week, I didn't like the fact that we weren't really at resistance uh, on the weekly chart. It left room, right, for kind of a drive into 2211, 2218. That's the high week reversal close for the year. It's also the 786 retracement of the yearly range. Um, so looking last week, we were kind of expecting to see, well, man, we could still get that final drive. The weekly, the monthly opening range is taking shape right above a nice lateral level at 120 that we've been watching. So we're looking for sort of a breakout of this range. Near term, this is the slope that we were looking at, possible resistance while below 2150. Yeah, that didn't hold. Okay, we broke higher. Let me take you back a step. Here's Euro on the weekly chart. So we are making that drive and we're in that zone now, 2211, 2218, we're trading just higher, um, like 2220 right now, 2223. So the weekly close is what we're gonna be focused on here. Momentum is at 60. So as far as like make or break levels, battle lines drawn, lines in the sand, whatever metaphor you wanna use for Euro, we're right here, we're right here. All right, on the weekly, chart what does that mean for euro on the daily well even on the daily scale when you take a look at this you have a little bit higher before you head into this year's objective yearly open at 2239 remember dxy has already taken out the yearly open euro dollar has not so that level is 2239 and we're looking to see if we can get a reaction there today keep in mind look back also finds the february high right there as well so we were looking for resistance into the open of the week. It broke. That rally is now we're eyeing the next major level of resistance at 2239. It's the same thing on the DXY on the other side. So one other thing I just want to put on this, you know, it's May 18th. Okay. All things held constant. If we were to look at this chart on an objective basis, here's your monthly open. You set a low, you set a high, you test the high, you make a run for the low. You don't even cover half the range before breaking out the highs. All things held constant. A close at these levels would, in my mind, constitute a break of the monthly opening range. And that would have us looking for a late month high, a late May high. First level to look at. 2239, the objective yearly open, the February swing high. Here's what it looks like on the intraday. So I don't have this larger encompassing slope here in blue on the intraday chart. I mean, I guess I could add it, but I just try to keep it a little bit clean. But just to show you that median line, if this break is legit, again, we should be seeing that leg take a move higher. The yearly open comes in at 22.39. Now, above the yearly open, I really don't have much. So 22.40, if we cap that, man, I mean, the high day close is 23.23. Look for maybe initial targets at, you know, the big handle here, 23, but those are really your next upside levels. So it's, it's one of those make or break moments. It's one of those make or break moments. All things held constant. If we look at this on, the, on paper, the initial level right now we're looking for is 22.39 on this stretch. Questions on Euro. Core inflation on tap tomorrow, expecting a print of 0.8% down from a 0.9 clip the previous month. Don't think it'll necessarily be the, the catalyst, but that is the next major event risk on tap here for Euro. All right. Breakout, Euro dollar, that's number two. Number three, I did want to cover also sterling. So when we talk about sterling here, um, it's a very similar scenario in that that rally last week fizzled out at uptrend resistance. Here's what it looked like last week, but I also gave you an update on this last night. And here's what that looked like. There's that high, it held, right? Oops, 
That was the high we're talking about. Held. Here's the pullback. We were talking about key support in this zone right here, 39.90 into 140.24. Perfect support. Here is the rebound. And last night we were saying, watch out. If this breakout's going to materialize, 42 handle, just shy of 42, comes in at that upper parallel. And then what do we always say? A break of uptrend resistance. If this breakout gives out, you should see an accelerated run. 42.38 and 43, just initial upside targets. So what the heck do we do with this? Is this a breakout or is this just another flirt high like this? Well, there's a couple of different ways to assess this. If we take a sliding parallel of this slope, so of the, the greater pitchfork here, if we take that to the highs, you know what I mean? Three touch. I don't want to like press that. If you're holding longs on Sterling, this is an area of which you just want to be a little cautious. Okay. Uh, again, 4238, if it breaches, I want to see an accelerated pop because this is uptrend resistance. Uh, at the same point, we're in overbought condition. The fuel is there. Um, buckle up. If you're holding longs, just, just bring your stops up uh, to the high day close. That'd be somewhere in the range of like 4140. Uh, and then see if you can get an extension to these targets. New exposure, I don't I don't want to mess with this thing. I don't want to mess with this thing. If you try to, well, there's nothing here to, to try to attempt to take a short on it, to try to fade this move yet. No, I, I don't see that. Um, now, if we were to get a momentum shift where you get a trigger break below 70, okay, um, maybe a spike high into 42.38 intraday, and you have some sort of high to trade against, I'm down with that. Uh, but all things held constant here. No, I don't see anything that would want to make me necessarily want to fade this. Yeah. Does that make sense? So that's sterling, you know, pressing uptrend resistance. Now, again, here's the daily chart. Okay. There's that 2018 high close at 42.36. And again, there's nothing... There's nothing beyond that. Keep in mind, that's, you know, the objective yearly high failed there in February. The high actually registered at 42, 43 precisely. So just, just beyond that. But you get the picture, right? Not to mention all things held constant, <laughs> just to play uh, devil's advocate here, all things held constant. If we were to close right at these levels, that's divergence on the, on the daily chart. So all of these trades, you know, euro, sterling, a little bit of resistance, just higher, has me looking for a reaction early in the week. Again, that doesn't dismiss all the opening ranges that have broken, but these are the first hurdles we're looking for. So again, sterling on the intraday, looking for a reaction here today. We would need to see a pivot above 42.38 to validate the break uh, or the breakout, as it were, uh, towards 43. Um, watch this. Watch this advance. It it looks precarious to me. It's not a fade yet, but certainly if you're holding longs, pay attention here. All right, that is sterling. Dollar CAD number four looks like this. And here's where Dollar CAD was last night. So, you know, we had a couple of different renditions on this uh on this gradient, right, on this uh, channel. Uh, we adjusted that yesterday as noted in the report. We were still knocking on the door for support here at, at 120.61. Looked like a objective, just downside break here of a consolidation pattern. So break below, you're looking for 29.13. That's the 100, just off the high, if it's, this is corrective. The bigger support zones just lower into the 119.19 19 level, 119 uh, and change. Here's dollar CAD from a thousand feet up on the weekly chart. The breakdown is now entering its seventh consecutive week. We're deep, deep in oversold territory. It's not where you wanna to try to fade this thing, but certainly gives the bears all the momentum they need. Here's your first major lateral level on the weekly chart. It's defined by the lows that you made back here in 2017 and the objective 50% retracement, the entire rally off the 2011 lows. So both of those are lined up right here weekly support it's exactly where we bottomed out last week we have to watch the weekly close here again there's nothing 
until 1919 if this breaks. Deep in oversold territory. In fact, this is the deepest oversold reading that we've gotten since the 2007 low. Okay, nothing to take lightly and definitely nothing to ignore. Okay, for those of you who are thinking, well, this can't last forever. Oh, seven weeks, I got to try to fade this. You get all kinds of rational rationalizations, um, but it's just not there. It's just not manifested in the technical. So keep an eye on this. Uh, we do have, like I said, core inflation data on tap tomorrow from Canada. Here's what the daily chart looks like. Momentum looks tired. There was not really any meaningful opening range for the month. If you take into account this massive range, then yeah, this technically would be a break, but man, the momentum does not look willing for an accelerated drop here. So again, it's one of those trades where the dominant trend, the dominant multi-week trend we've been following, still looking kind of tired. So look, again, objective, take emotions out of it, 26, uh, excuse me, 2060, 2063, still resistance. Okay, daily resistance. That's a lot, yesterday's low, former swing lows, 2017 low, all that good stuff. Uh, watch the daily close here. If we close below, the risk is still there for a deeper drop. Here's the intraday levels that I showed you last night. So we did go for a perfect clip of that 2013 level, that um, 100 off the high. And again, quick dip into oversold, here's the pop higher. Is that a breakout? You could put a trigger on here. I was looking at this earlier today. I don't know if it's something I'd operate off of, but you gotta trigger their resistance. Again, if we buckle back above 2060, it could take the daily chart back right back above that level, right? I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see the daily close. But the point is, not chasing this any lower. I have no exposure on this, just as a disclaimer. If you're holding shorts, um, a break below 2013, right the low we made in overnight trade. That's basically what your focus is today, to get the run on 119.30, um, 37, 119.20, that zone right there. Weekly open resistance, 21.12, bearish inval, still 21.50. CPI, uh, core inflation rather, excuse me, on tap tomorrow. All right, that is Looney. Uh, Sterling, we covered. So we covered this uh, dollar yen. So dollar yen is being a dollar yen uh, type of trade as usual. <laughs> here is it. Here it is. Uh, and we were looking for one of these two levels for support since the start of the week. So it's either the yearly open from last year, which is 108.62, or a 38.2 of just this near-term advance, and we're doing that now at 108.90. Um, slope support comes in just lower. So I'm looking for a reaction here. Let me take a step back. Here's dollar yen on the weekly chart, right? Huge, massive resistance zone at 109.68, 109.92. We talked about that for a while. We talked about that on the initial approach, which we blasted through uptrend resistance failure, move lower, break through the median line, test of the 25% parallel, back into the median line, and here we are, last three weeks. Dum, dum, dum. So you're still below a key resistance zone. Key support we highlighted on the way down from the reversal that we saw last month. That's right here at 107.83, 107.76, nothing changes. So the whole focus right now for dollar yen is on this 200 pip zone. Okay, that's from the weekly charts, 1,000 feet up. Here's dollar yen the daily. Wasn't very, wasn't a divergent signal, but nonetheless, resistance here at 60. Remember what we always say in strong uptrends, support at 40, strong, strong downtrends, resistance at 60. Here's that key resistance zone we just talked about, 106.67, 106.92, blast off, failure. Here's the pullback. So the monthly opening range for May is set, okay? objective, objective stuff. We're still right slap in the middle of that range. Here's what it looks like on the intraday. 
with momentum, mind you, at 50. So you're like flat as can be here on, on dollar yen. Now the intraday picture gives you a little bit more of a, of, of, of a, of a color here um, of where we are in trade. And it's, it looks pretty decent. So here's, again, this is what it looked like last night. If you go to the previous update, guys, it's the same slope. It's the same exact slope. Here's what it looked like last week. Okay, and we were testing into this resistance range. We said, oh, not only is that the May opening range high, it's that cluster of technical features we had highlighted already. Look for the pullback, constructive above 2020. So we got that pullback last week. Last night, we wanted to highlight that we already continued that drop, 108.90, 108.62. Here's 108.90. Now I don't have, again, you could draw a resistance trigger here in momentum. It looks like you could see, you know, stab into trend support, if not 108.60 before the rebound. But the point being is you're looking for support on this pullback, right? You can even give this decline uh, a near-term gradient. Sorry about that. Something like this right it's not the cleanest we get the picture right so you can see a scenario where this is some sort of bull flag and even if you dribble lower you're basically risking the exhaustion move you need to break above 109.30 to kind of get this thing going that's the weekly open as well uh, the weekly open and proper comes in at 109.24 um and look for that breakout to fuel uh, something. If it's going to make a move, that's kind of where I'd want to see the origin uh, of the breakout. Sub 108.62, ah, I'm out. I don't even want to try to fight this because, again, aside from this being a modified pitch for it, guys, it's basic trend. If I just take this, that's what a modified pitch for it does for you. If I break below that, it's going to necessitate a break below basic slope support, and that would certainly... Uh, sort of upset things here a little bit. So big moves, big moves, dollar yen, 108.62, 108.90, 30 pip range, you're looking for some sort of inflection, break beyond that, and you're looking for resumption of a move lower. Okay, that is the abomination number five. And let's take a quick segue here into crude and gold from last night. So gold is breaking out, right? Uh, the breakout, the level that we had talked about for quite some time was 1850. Here's gold on the weekly charts. Um, and that was defined by the yearly high week reversal close. It was an outside weekly reversal. Um, and so from a weekly perspective, this is still, you know, what you would need to see a weekly close above. We haven't done that yet, but I think we've traveled through it quite a bit, right? We're 20 bucks above that range already. Uh, and we're testing those swing highs that we made back in February, or I think that was actually January, but you get the picture, right? This is certainly a, a confluence region. Again, we talked about that 100-day moving average. Uh, certainly, if we close above these levels, it's a straight breakout. Here's gold on the daily chart. Little bit of a cautionary tale with momentum probing 70 on the daily chart and price probing basic parallel resistance. What is that? Is that going to be a break? A breakout? Well, if it's a breakout, it's a breach of uptrend resistance. You should see another accelerated breach here. Are we going to get that from these levels? I don't know. It doesn't look very convincing. If we just take a quick swing high from those moves that we made back in January and into the open of February, actually, that gives you 1875. We're there now. So all of these trades are extremely frustrating if you are not positioned already because they're in they're kind of stretching towards extremes already. Uptrend extremes. I don't want to buy into uptrend resistance. Here's the intraday chart. Again, nothing here that would necessarily pull the trigger on a short or try to fade. You're getting divergence ever since yesterday with all of these fresh new highs that you're making. But again, look at the slope. 
if that's not riding this slope, I don't know what is. Look at this. That's not a confirmed trend break. That's not what you want to see if you're going to break uptrend resistance. I want to see a blast through. So, you know, our grading could be off by a little bit, this and that. You get the picture. You need to see an accelerated run here, bottom line. I don't want to see this slow meander beyond here. This is either going to blast off, and if we finally buckle, you get that cascade effects where all the shorts get cleared out towards 1898. Um, or, you know, you get one more bump, and all of a sudden everyone starts taking profits, and it, and it, and it kind of washes out. This is very – very you know, look at previous price action when we've seen stuff like this. Um, be careful. Be careful here on gold. We're still at uptrend resistance. Intraday, daily. Weekly marks the breakout here. And with all this talk coming along with inflation, 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 these levels will become even more so critical. Jay says, I think we can draw the 100% extension around there. Um, talk to me, Jay. What are you talking about? What, what time frame are you looking at there? on the daily are you talking about the advance off the lows my genius friend jay park god bless you yes yes so aside from the fact that we're running into those january highs the February opening range high, I don't know if you can see there, the marker's in the way, but it's right there. Um, the 100 off the low, absolutely, absolutely. 1876 is the near-term resistance there, yeah. Great. Thank you, Jay. Iman says, hello, Mike, sorry. <laughs> no worries, Iman, great to see you. Uh, I'm covering your, your shindig right here on gold. So look for a reaction here today. This is pretty big. This is pretty big. Jay says, and the 50 from the August high. Yeah, I think I did have, have that earlier, but I removed it. So I'm not going to really stress the 50 per se, half the move, sure. But all the more reason whoops where did it go move that 38 to here's the 50 yep 7 1876 all lined up all lined up absolutely the more confluence the better right late january highs february high 100 off the low 50 off the high Big stuff here for gold. Nicely done, Jay. Man, I'm off my game. Thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> All right, so here's gold coming into some pretty, pretty strong, yes, uptrend resistance, Jay. Um, Iman says, yes, my favorite gold, but no luck with it recently. So the advance has been kind of relentless, Iman, right? Every time we mark a level, uh, it sits there for a while, Sits there for a while, blast through. Sits there for a while, sits for a blast through. We're there again. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's a bull market, guys, and it's a breakout any way we slice it. Uh, what we're trying to assess is, are we finally at an inflection point where we're at uptrend resistance? Even if we are, like we were here, like we were here, the declines have been what? Like 2% declines? Max? So could be another exhaustion, exhaustion choke point, but because of the technical significance, specifically all those factors that Jay just pointed out, a breach close above 1876 would and be, in my opinion, uh, fuel for uh, another accelerated run. It shouldn't be a slow pivot. It should be a, a rather strong reaction here. Make sense? All right, and then we'll take a segue here into crude uh, markets. Obviously, the oil price uh, rally was at big resistance again yesterday, that level defined by 66.15 to 66.60. Uh, 
I'll take you to crude on uh, the weekly charts, and this is basically the same chart we've been looking at since last year. Confluence region of resistance is defined by those swing lows from 2018, uh, both the close, um, low week close from August and the swing close. You saw resistance, resistance two years in a row, resistance earlier this year. Here we are again. Okay. Uh, pitchfork off the low high low from 2016 and 2019 gives you the 75% parallel right there and there. And we're at resistance. So if we close pivot 16, uh, 6590, it's basically the 66 handle, I'd want to see again an accelerated run. Last four weeks. Exhaustion, 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 exhaustion. Nonetheless, it's closed higher all four weeks. Here's what it looks like on the daily chart. 2019 high we closed 66.14 uh, is where the bottom zone of that major resistance sort of pivot stands. Your monthly opening range is textbook here. Here's your monthly open. You set a low, set a high. Test the low. We've been testing the high now for three separate attempts. I guess you could take this to the new high we just registered, just a couple of pips higher, but you get the picture. You got the monthly open here at 63.45, basic 38.2, the advance off the March low. And again, even if the monthly opening range breaks, we need to clear this zone. The yearly highs, 100 off the low, that's 67.70s into 6790s. Here's crude on the intraday. <clears throat> Same slope, fake break or a false breakout last week. We covered this one um, at length with that move. Dip below the lower parallel. We still marked the May open in the 382 as that necess necessary break to give us the move lower. Didn't happen, right? didn't happen. Here's the previous update before that looked. Literally, we drove right through trend support, boom, bullish invalidation held, and then we ripped higher. So in our update last night, we were saying, well, time out. We're right back at resistance again. That's 66.14 to 66.57, 2019 high, 2019 um, high we close. So there was the spike. We tried to move an overnight trade again, failed at the median line, pulled right back. Weekly open support 6546, bullish invalidation 6465, a topside breach. There's your butter zone 6790 into 6772. I am broadly constructive, and I've been saying this for a while now on crude. Um, you're at resistance, though, right? You're at resistance. Constructive above 6465. Need a break above 66.57. You're essentially looking for 68 beyond that, 67.94, 67.72. But hard, looks like we're getting another hard rejection, at least in the near term, for this resistance zone yet again. All right, <clears throat> last two things on my list, and then I see uh, Marchin has a couple of quick uh, questions here on some Sterling Crosses, but Aussie and Kiwi, both very interesting trades, both uh, were at resistance with that move um, that we made in overnight, again, taking us into a big, big zone. Here was our last updates um, for Aussie. Here was the slope I showed you earlier, uh, I guess this was last week. Uh, we had made this drop into yearly open support. And I can't, I always stress these levels for you, very unseen by the masses. You know, people don't really talk about it very often, but they tend to be very strong inflection, support and resistance zones. And here is another example. We dropped into it last week. This was late last week on the 13th. Um, that held, right? That held. We talked about the divergence into that zone. Resistance at 77.65, bearish invalidation right back at a critical resistance zone we've been tracking for months. And that's that's this right here, right? Big, big, big resistance. So the high close for the year now comes in at 78.66 for the weekly chart. 
Um, it's the 88.6 from that drop in 2018. Big, big resistance zone. We've been looking for a break of this zone for four or five weeks. We still haven't gotten it. So where does that put us? When you, the yearly range is well-defined, the monthly range is well-defined, and you are range-bound condition across the board, here's what it looks like on the daily chart. Again, another trade where the monthly opening range is, is, is perfectly set above slope support, above the 100-day moving average, above the yearly open right? Massive support zone. Resistance right into 78.25 and 78 handle. We've been talking about that, like I said, for the last three months. So here we are, guys. We're right back there again. We need to see an inflection here. Uh, this is the rally or the recovery. Once that broke the median line, this is exactly where you'd, you'd think you'd see resistance. The longer dated 618, even the short term, just this near term drop, that's the 618. 2018 open, we've talked about the 78 handle. We're there right now. If you press this and you're like, all right, well, let's say this is one, two, three, four, five. If this is a three wave rally and it's corrective, that should be capped. Oops. By 7830 the upper end of that resistance zone. So even if we spike a little higher, you know what I mean? You could possibly get that two equal leg effect before the move lower. I don't know. All I know is that I'm looking for that exhaustion spike in Aussie. Anything above 78.25, 78.30 is going to be, in my, uh, again, humble opinion, just the resumptive breakout. And again, you'd be looking for 78.70 and beyond. But all things held constant, this is, this is pretty big. This is pretty big for Aussie into 78.30, look for a reaction. Aussie employment numbers on tap tomorrow. Similar scenario with Kiwi. Uh, I don't think the setup is, 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 well, I wanted to leave this pitchfork on you guys, uh, for you, just to show you how this panned out from last um, week. Here was the Kiwi update. Here was the pitchfork. We were right here at support. Bearish invalidation was at the upper parallel. Kick that out later in time, right? That actually held into the close of the week pullback. What's this? What's this? Well, it certainly gives us a breakout of this near-term slope we were looking at. But what's the problem with that? It puts us right back at resistance again. So what are you going to do now? You're going to start doing a pitchfork with that. You have to make sure you have confidence in your high. So if we remove that, that's all I'm looking at. Resistance, again, 72.65, 72.87, same zone that caught it in the early, late April run, the early May run, and here we are again. Topside breach, looking for 73.50, 73.69. I think those are just initial targets. This is a big resistance zone. Um, ultimately, you know, I wanted to see a move below 71.77, the monthly open, but really this zone, 71.50s, to validate a break of the near-term uptrend here. And hopefully, if we do get that bubble, if we do get the exhaustion, guys, we'll have some sort of gradient or slope to work with um, at that point with a new high, whether it's something like this with whatever high materializes, uh, I don't know. But the point being, we're on the lookout again for that exhaustion print if we are gonna head lower. Here's the daily chart for Kiwi, right? Big zone. Really tidy, monthly opening range. Look for the breakout. You know, if you've been frustrated, guys, or you've been trying to intraday trade this market, and it's been kind of a, a little bit of a, a frustration on your part, I hear you. Here's the VIX. You know, we are getting a little bit of a bump, but I ha you have to note that for the last couple of days, we've definitely been seeing a contraction in volatility. Again, contraction in volatility doesn't necessarily mean no direction. Uh, markets can be moving orderly and VIX will continue to contract and contract. We want, right, that surge in the VIX. We want some back and forth that gives us clarity, gives us structure. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that we are right back here at the low day close that we made back uh, in March before that break, the gap that we made into April. 
but also the objective um, monthly open. We're right here. So hopefully we can find some support uh, in the VIX. You're seeing a little bit of a pop here, maybe a move higher. Uh, a lot of you have been really liking um, the TNX uh, or the, the the yields analysis that we've been kind of looking at. Here's what the yield looks like on the 10-year that we've been tracking. Remember the breakout last week? Former slope resistance has been more or less support, but really the May open at 62 has been what we've been looking at. Here's what it looks like on the intraday chart. If the breakout is legit, this slope should hold. Downside should be governed by 156, um, 157 area. Ideally 158 right here, um, but we'll see. So quick look there at uh, VIX and the 10 year. All right, that's everything I have on my list, guys. Um, kind of ran through all of these, uh, all the way to the end of the time here, but let me see if I can get uh, your questions out. Marchin's left the room, but I'll watch the recording later. So I'll try to do this ad hoc. He wants to look at uh, Swiss yen. Uptrend resistance. Uptrend resistance on mounting divergence. I wouldn't. I wouldn't chase this. I wouldn't chase this. What I don't like about this is, interestingly enough, it's not even the yen. It's the Swiss. Uh, we didn't go over dollar Swiss today, but you know, quick look at dollar Swiss. That's breaking again a major pivot in price. The outside reversal high day that we made for February, the lows that we made for November of last year, the monthly opening range lows. Today would be pretty risky. Okay, if we close lower here, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of Swissy strength. The divergent signals just doesn't have you know doesn't have the conviction. So my problem with that last trade um, is the Swiss, the Swiss here but uptrend resistance on building divergence i wouldn't really go chasing that looks like it could be an exhaustion front there uh march and pound yen a little higher before you see resistance there from a slope standpoint that's the daily chart Mm, high day close from 2018 comes in at 155.50, just a little bit higher into slope. Um, again, I'm not a big fan of like trying to fade uh, necessarily these major breakouts, but this is something that if we did reach into there and you got a decent intraday signal, it might be something. Not from here though, not from here. At least 55, in my opinion. And I start looking for maybe some exhaustion there. But the, both of these trades that you're looking at, let me see what the other one is. Pound CAD. Are, are kind of stretched margin, uh, which concerns me. This one's a little bit different, major support bounce in here. Uh, pound CAD bounced off of a big support zone. That was 68.54 into 68.70. You can see how many lows and low day closes we've marked into that zone. Um, and we're now back at a 38 two, basic 236 of the yearly range um, and basic slope resistance. I'd be looking for for a reaction here. Tight weekly opening range in place. And that's your uh, and that's your monthly open. So here are just some key levels of reference I'd put on this one if the so your weekly, your monthly opening range is actually still pretty tidy. We haven't even broken it, right? Um, it's right here. So we're testing the upper ends of that extreme now. The 71 handle gives you um, that basic 236 of the yearly range. Let me add that here as well. So this is some points of reference for you, Marchin. Perfect. What's this six one eight from?
Okay, yeah, I'll leave that there too. So key 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 support. And bullish invalidation. Resistance. I mean, this is your monthly opening range high, but the confluence zone here, I'd be looking for a zone. So really 7144 would be your breakout. Um, but for the weekly opening range standpoint, this is a nice zone set right here. Not bad. Hope that helps, Marchin. Um, of the three that you threw out, uh, I, this, is, this is the one I'd be most interested in. All right. Okay, guys, that's all I got on my on, on my end. Um, it's been an interesting week. I'm hoping we get a surge, an uh, uptick in volatility. Remember, monthly speaking, we're not too surprised to see the dollar losses kind of mount. We were kind of hoping to see some support this week, but you know, May is notoriously not really a good month for the dollar is on whole. So uh, see if this low holds, okay? Just when all hope is lost, and this could be, be this could very well be me capitulating, guys. Uh, just when all hope is lost and everyone's just, okay, dollar, it's just going, okay, we're going dollar 70 here, right? Things might start to turn back. So watch these weekly opening ranges. Watch the extremes specifically as it pertains to euro and sterling as we head into those big zones of resistance. I just talked about the yearly open there and, and sterling really trying to press that uptrend resistance. I think if there's going to be a fake out, we could be at the onset right here. So keep the powder dry keep in mind we have inflation from the uk eurozone canada and japan this week and hopefully uh, that helps add to the inflation story which could help spur some more volatility uh that's all from my end guys best of luck trading i will see you on thursday hopefully we'll have a little bit more uh, of an update and a little bit more conviction on some of these ranges till then best of luck trading guys see you on thursday cheers